So I am super excited today because I'm going to show you one of my favorite ad strategies. Um, as you guys know, my background is television. And so video has always been a huge um, part of my entire life. And what I'm actually going to show you guys today is nothing that I learned from an internet marketer. It's not something that I learned from a webinar. Um, all of the things that I'm going to actually teach you guys tonight are things that I learned back whenever I worked for the 11 o'clock news. Um, I'm about to age myself. Um, so for those of you guys who don't know, because I know we have a lot of new faces tonight, um, I actually worked in television um, for almost two decades. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to age myself. Um, I started in television in 2002. You guys do the math on that. Um, I'm actually turning 40 next uh, next month. So I've been I've been around the block or two. Got a couple of Emmy awards um, from my days of working at CBS. Um, but my very first job was to, and I know a couple of you guys have already heard this story, so bear with me. Um, but this job in particular is the reason that I am so good at what I do. A lot of people think that, well, Laurel's really good at Facebook ads or Laurel's good at YouTube ads. And you guys are probably not any better at pushing the buttons. I mean, I'm probably not any better than some of you guys at pushing the buttons. It's all about the content and the messaging. That's what really makes advertising work. And that's what I'm good at. And so my very first job was to get people to watch the 11 PM news. Super, super hard, right? People are fighting sleep. They're fighting all kinds of things to do other than watching the 11 o'clock news. Like who the F wants to stay up to watch the 11 o'clock news, right? And so I worked for CBS back in the day when CSI was at its prime. And it was my job to get people to not only watch the news, but I had the hardest job. So right after the CSI credits rolled, it was my job to do two things. One, get people to not pick up their remote and two, stick around throughout the commercial break to actually watch the news. So I knew very early on that I was going to have to do two things and do two things really, really well. One, I had to get people's attention and two, I had to keep it. And practicing those two very fundamental things are the very reason that I'm sitting here in front of all of you guys today. So this is not any latest tactics and hacks because I know that's what everyone wants to sell you guys, but I can make this very bold promise that everything that all of the guys are selling you guys could actually find here in the program if you look hard enough. Um, there's no special, and I keep seeing all the ads, there's no special sauce, there's no secret strategy that everyone's using. It literally comes down to one thing and one thing only. You have to be able to, one, get people's attention, and two, you have to be able to clearly tell people what they're going to get if they buy. That's all. That's If you can do those two things really, really well, you will be just as good at Facebook advertising, YouTube advertising, LinkedIn advertising, any type of advertising there is. Okay. And so what we're going to actually go over tonight is something that I call power content. And then as a bonus, I'm actually going to highlight a strategy that I'm actually doing with several of my Lean on Laurel clients and also the strategy that I myself use, which is a $500 a month video funnel. So we're going to go ahead and get started. I'm going to share my screen. We are going to have a lot of fun tonight. Okay. So I'm going to unhighlight this because right now you're probably asking yourself, right? And I'll, I'll hide myself because I, I get distracted by looking at myself sometimes. Um, so you're probably asking yourself, what is power content? Okay. Now we're going to go, we're going to go on a deeper level tonight than what I've ever done inside the $7 program. And so power content is high value content that helps give clarity to our audience. Okay. So if we think about this, what is the number one reason that people don't buy what we're selling? It's because they don't have the clarity that they need is if we, if they give us money, what are they going to get in return? Okay. So that is what power content is built to do. Okay. Now, a lot of times people think that power content is just for top of funnel, meaning to cold traffic. 
but I actually use power content in two different ways. So for example, we're gonna talk about two different types of power content tonight. The first type is gonna be the type that we run to cold traffic, okay? So these are gonna be videos that are three to five minutes and that they have no links, okay? So this is just valuable content. And a lot of people and a lot of gurus, they threw rocks at me for years about this, this content strategy because they would tell their audience, well, no one should be spending money if they're not, if they're putting in a dollar, they should be getting $2 back. And so this is a, this is a strategy that takes a little bit more patience, but how would it be, okay, if six months from now, if you were super, super consistent with this strategy, how would you feel that any time that you needed a cash infusion, or if you needed to sell something that you could sell out with a single Facebook post. How many of you guys would think that that would be the life right there? That any time that you posted, right, there would be people raising their hand saying, yes, that's, this is what I want. Well, that's what this strategy does. And this is the strategy that a lot of my agency clients loved me for throughout the entire iOS update. How many of you guys like saw the, oh my gosh, the Armageddon, right? The Armageddon that came with the iOS update. People were no longer, were freaking out because of the pixel tracking. And, and right now the tracking pretty much sucks, right? But if you guys go into the home section of the program, all of you guys should have watched this video right here, the reverse organic method. This will actually show you why the overall strategy that I teach inside the $7 program works, whether you have pixels or not. Okay. And so if you have learned from that reverse organic system, this is what we're, this is what it looks like. Okay. If you haven't gone and watched that training yet, I highly recommend it, but I took a screenshot from the training here and you can see that there's two ways to enter the ecosystem. Okay. On the right, you'll see a typical funnel. Now, this doesn't matter whether it's a low ticket funnel, high ticket funnel, whatever. On the right side, you're going to see that we run cold traffic to a funnel. So this would be, you know, to a landing page for a webinar, an ebook, or maybe you're running traffic straight to a low ticket. On the left hand side, you're going to see something that I have listed as power content. Okay. So I like to call all of our warm audience, my ecosystem. Now this is whether it's on Instagram, whether it's on emails, right? Because it's an entire ecosystem that works together to pull someone from just nurturing them into the conversion stage. So whenever I say power content in the sense that we're gonna talk about two different types of power content tonight, the first type is going to be this one right here that we run to cold traffic, okay? And so I'm going to go over why I actually like to start with power content, because everyone who comes into this program, they're like, well, I've got an ebook or I've got a low ticket offer. Why do I need to be spending my money on power content? OK, now there these are five reasons, but there are a ton more. But these are my five favorite. Number one, videos build instant credibility with cold audiences. OK. Think about this. I'm looking at Doreen. So I'm going to use Doreen as an example. Everyone wait, say hi to Doreen. Doreen wave there. There she is. So Doreen is a high school counselor. And on the side, her little side hustle is she helps students and their parents get into the college of their dreams throughout the entire application process. Pretty freaking cool, right? I mean, I, my mom, I know, would have raised her hand and said, Doreen, I need you, right? Like, super, like, getting into college is super stressful, super confusing. And so Doreen helps people do that. What do you think is going to make a parent take action and want to talk to Doreen? Because Doreen charges $500 for a navigation session, okay? One hour or however long, I, I forget what it is, but... She gets people on the phone, so two hours to spend with Doreen, and she literally maps out the entire application process, gives them a checklist, makes that so much easier. What do you think is going to get parents to trust her more? A picture or a video? 
of Dorian explaining the importance of why they need to be doing the things that they're doing, right? Video, of course, right? So that's the number one reason that I love to start with power content, visibility and credibility, okay? Reason number two, it allows us to test our audience and our messaging. I'm going to give you guys an example, okay? So if we're looking at the client accelerator ecosystem from a 30,000 foot view right now, okay? On the right hand, right, we have our funnel. Doesn't matter, again, what type of funnel this is. And then we have our power content over here. Now, remember, we're going to send cold traffic to the funnel and we're going to send cold traffic to power content. But here's the thing. And I'm going to use Doreen as an example. So what do you think would be better for Doreen? Building a mini webinar funnel and, and getting people to apply for a call through a funnel? Or do you think it would be easier for to, her to put out high value content, get people to raise their hand for some type of cheat sheet or some type of offer, and she pulls them straight into Messenger? What do you think would be the fastest path to cash? The power content, correct? Now, here's the thing. And this is why I like to start with power content. And, and, and any aha moments, let me know in the chat because I think there's gonna be a couple of aha moments here. So let's say that Doreen right now, Doreen is, is doing the, the power content, right? So what if she creates three of the most valuable pieces of content that gets people to raise their hand for this checklist the nine things that every junior has to accomplish before their senior year, right? And she's running $5 ads to these pieces of power content. There's a couple of things that are going to happen, right? One, she's going to get a gauge on, is my audience responding to this content? She can measure that by how long are they watching those Facebook videos, correct? Whenever you whenever you place video ads, you can see how long your audience is watching. Number two, she'll be able to figure out, am I even targeting the right audience? Number three, they're raising their hand saying, I want that checklist. And number four, she's having conversations with them in Messenger and handling all of those objections, okay? Once she has that down pat and Doreen comes to me and says, Laurel, I can't handle all of these messenger conversations. I am getting way too many. What do we have? We have every single asset that we need in order to build a funnel. And it has already been validated for much cheaper. And I see so many people building the funnel first and then they try to go and validate it. And then it's super expensive. They get super frustrated. And then they're left with a funnel that doesn't convert. They're left with a funnel that has already cost them a couple of thousands of dollars and zero cash flow. And so whenever I say that power content allows us to test our audience and messaging, that is what I'm talking about. I'll give you another example. One of my agency clients, back a couple of months ago, all of a sudden her webinar that was making six figures a month, all of a sudden stopped working. A lot of people's you know, solution to her would have been record another webinar. I didn't do that. What I did was, we tested certain demand triggers within her entire business model, and we used power content to figure out what we were going to do the new webinar based on. Saved her a ton of money testing conversion ads to that webinar, okay? So that's what I mean that I like to test my audience and my messaging, okay? Reason number three, we can build retargeting audiences without the pixel. Doreen has three pieces of power content that we're running to cold traffic. And by the way, her targeting is not 
not all of these like very niche audiences. We're just running it to parents of high school kids and that's it. No, none of this like super niche, like I'm gonna target all these things, like literally parents of high school kids. We're letting her messaging do the work. Now, Doreen doesn't have to worry about iOS update and pixels and all of that fun stuff because she's just getting people from video to video to messenger. That's her funnel. And that's what we're gonna talk about a little bit later because I'm actually gonna show you guys what that actually looks like. Reason number four is they create solid lookalike audiences, okay? Especially if we can make a lookalike audience based off of someone who has watched one, like 100% of the video. If we have 1,000 people that have watched 100% of your video, that's gonna be a pretty solid lookalike audience, okay? And the last one is my absolute favorite. I hardly ever have to deal with ads getting rejected and all of that fun stuff because they're the safest type of ad to place because of their short copy. And we're going to talk about the short copy of power content. So whenever I get a new lean on Laurel client and they've never ran ads before, or if they ha haven't ran ads in several months, the very first thing I do is run power content. Why? Because it's the safest type of ad to place. What do you think is going to happen if you have a brand new ad account and you place a conversion ad that has a link to a webinar? And let's say that webinar landing page has something that Facebook doesn't like and it rejects your ad and you have no other ads running. Guess what's going to happen? Facebook's not only going to reject your ad, it's going to shut down your ad, account, your ad account and possibly your business manager. Same thing if you haven't ran ads in a while. Like Facebook's always going to check the content. And so what I do is I place the three pieces of power content that I'm going to show you guys tonight. That's the, those are the very first three ads that I place because then if I have three pieces of power content ads running short copy headline promise of value, right? And then the video, I've got three ads running. Let's say one of my clients does have an ad that Facebook doesn't like, whether it is the offer on the landing page or maybe it's the ad copy and I launch that ad and it gets rejected, their ad account is gonna be okay because the ratio, right? They already have three ads running without any issues. The ratio three to one is gonna keep their ad account safe. And so this is where a lot of people don't realize like the importance of seasoning your ad account, like making sure that we're being compliant with what Facebook says our ads should be, okay? so. We talked about two ways to enter the ecosystem. Tonight, we are only gonna be talking about the left side, okay? And that is people coming in through power content. So think about this. There's two ways to enter the ecosystem. And like I said, I go way in depth in this training right here. So if you haven't watched this, make sure you watch it. But there's two ways that people can enter my ecosystem, which is all of my retargeting elements. And that is one, they either have to watch 25% of one of my pieces of power content or two, they have to visit that offer, that funnel that I'm running ads to, whether that is my $7 offer or whether that is one of my clients webinars, okay? There's two ways to enter the ecosystem and get retargeting. Tonight, we're gonna to be talking about the left side, okay? So let's talk about the video funnel to sell your offers, okay? So I wanna, I wanna say this, and I actually just did a, a recent YouTube video placing my power content on YouTube. This runs on, you can run this on multiple platforms, not just Facebook. I use this on LinkedIn. I use this on Twitter. I use this on Facebook. I use this on Instagram. I love, love, love running this strategy across multiple platforms and it's super cheap to do so. As a matter of fact, on YouTube, I only run it for $2 a day. Facebook, I run $5 a day. Um, YouTube, $2 a day. And by the way, that's all here in, in the program too. If you go here, ad strategies, um, YouTube advertising, I walk you through all of the stuff that we're going to talk about tonight on how to do it on YouTube too. Okay. So what did I mention a while ago? Fastest path to cash conversations, right? And so this is what that video funnel is going to look like. Very, very simple. Okay. We're going to run cold traffic to three pieces of content, okay? If they watch any one of those videos, they don't have to watch all three, okay? A lot of people have that misconception about the power content thinking they have to watch all three. I just make sure that they have to watch one, okay? 
Now, next question is, what type of ads are these? Are they video ads? Are they what, what kind of ads are they? They are video ads. And right now, currently at this workshop time, I am running video view campaigns. But some of you guys who are sitting in this room right now probably have already been conformed unwillingly um, to the new objective that Facebook is putting the video view campaigns under engagement. So if ever you hear me talk about engagement ads and power content being engagement ads, it is because some of my clients, their ads manager has already switched over to the new look and video view campaigns are no longer an option. The video view campaigns fall under engagement. So if this, you know, if tomorrow Facebook forces all of us to use engagement, that is what I'm talking about right now. Okay. So you can do, and, and by the way, sometimes engagement gets better video views than video views. Um, so I like to use them interchangeably anyway. So I'm not really upset that Facebook is, is taking the video view objective away. I think it makes sense in that video views would fall under engagement. Okay. So first, our first mission here is to get people to watch 25% of one of these three pieces of power content. And the second thing we're going to do is we're going to boost all of our business page content to people who watch the video. Very, very simple. I know I just said the boost button and a lot of you guys are like, wait, what? I thought we were not ever supposed to touch the boost button. Um, I love the boost button. Boost button makes me lots of money, but it's only because I have a strategy behind it. I only boost my content on my business page to people who have watched my videos. What am I doing? I am building my audience. I am building my visibility and I am making sure that everything on my business page gets seen by the right audience. Very, very simple concept, but it's kind of hard to execute. Because what were we talking about earlier is Laurel's not good at Facebook ads. Laurel's good at getting people's attention and keeping their attention. That's what I'm really good at. That's what I want to make you guys really good at too. Okay. So tier one. Okay. So I'm going to call this tier one. And then the boosted post, I'm going to call that tier two. Okay. So that's what that video funnel is going to look like. We're going to have a tier one and then we're going to have a tier two. So what does that look like? Okay, so tier one, and this is super important, okay? Three to five minute power content videos. If they're a little shorter, I'm not gonna ding you. Um, I, try to, I try to get people as close to three to five minutes as possible because it is the sweet spot, okay? Now, here's the thing. If you have a super tight niche like Doreen, or if you have a super tight niche like Scott, I'm looking at Scott. Scott teaches um, truck drivers how to get their CDL license very and how to pass their driver's test the first time. Super clear offer, right? You can get away with doing shorter pieces of power content because if I'm not a trucker, I'm not gonna watch Scott for even 60 seconds, right? If I'm not looking to get my CDL license. So in this, in this super shorter niches, it's okay to have shorter power content, but I try as hard as I can to get my clients to do three to five minutes. Um, especially if you are in a much harder niche, like the internet marketing niche, the business op niche, um, all of those things where there's lots of competition, the longer we can get people to watch the video, the better, right? But if they're cold audience, we don't want to make them watch too long of the video. So three to five minutes is that sweet spot. Okay. So remember how I was saying that power content ads are the safest type to place, it's because of this. The copy for the post or the ad is only going to be headline promise of value and call to action, okay? Remember how I told you guys, the hardest thing to do is get people to watch the 11 o'clock news. This was the formula I used in order to do that. This is the formula that I used in order to win all the awards I have won in television. This is what I used to grow my business from zero to my first and second six figures all organically because of this formula. And think about this guys, because a lot of you guys are like thinking, well, could I do this organically? Absolutely, absolutely. I made my first and second six figures doing this all organically. But 
Because I know on your mind, you're like, well, if I'm doing this organically, will it work on my business page? No, it will not. <laughs> there is no reach on the business page. If you want to do this strategy that we're learning tonight organically, do it on your profile. If you don't want to use your profile, then you're going to want to use paid ads. There's just it, their business page reach is, is horrible. So headline promise of value call to action. But wait, Laurel, didn't you say that there's going to be no links? There's not going to be a link, okay? And so I like to call this a non-committal call to action, meaning I'm not going to ask my prospect for something in return for me to give them value. So here, let me go. I'll go over the formula and we'll, I'll show you guys how it works, okay? So what I like to teach my students to do is write their promise of value first. I know it's out of order, headline promise of value CTA, but I always tell my students to write the promise of value first um, because it makes it easier to go back and write the headline or some people would call it the hook. And so a promise of value is what are they gonna get if they give you their attention over the next X amount of minutes, right? I told you guys I like power content to be three to five minutes. And so, for instance, in this piece of power content, I said, give me five minutes and I'm going to walk you through one of the most popular funnels that fails to convert quality calls. Ooh, that's that's catchy, huh? And if, if you just give me five minutes, I'm going to walk you through why one of the most popular funnels actually sucks at getting quality calls. Right. Promise of value. But not all is lost. I'll show you how to change one thing that will start attracting people ready to work with you. That's the promise of value. I'm telling people, if you give me five minutes, I'm going to walk you through this. So I started with my promise of value. Now all I got to go is, what can I say to get their attention? Well, if they're using this type of popular funnel to, and they want to book more discovery calls, I'm just going to go up the back and write the headline and say, is your goal to book more discovery calls this month? Don't use this funnel. People would be like, what? Right. You see, you see how that, how that worked. Here's what ends up happening when people write the headline first. And I see this a lot with my students is whenever my students try to write the headline first, they end up always putting the promise of value as the headline. And then they don't know what to say for the promise of value. So that's why that's, it's a little hack. And this is how I taught my writers too. Whenever they worked with me at CBS, I would always tell them in the topical promotions, that's what those little commercials are called that air in the commercial break that tell you what's coming up on the news is topicals. And so I trained all of my topical writers to start with the promise of value and then write the headline next. Um, and then the CTA, because you're probably thinking, Laurel, if I'm not going to send them to a link or I'm not going to send them to get what, what, am, what am I doing here? Um, I like to do, I like to do something um, that I call value bombs. And so anytime that I do a Facebook live, I like to give people something that is going to enhance the experience that they just had. So for instance, in this case, I told them, if you want to get better quality discovery calls, don't use this funnel. And so in order to enhance their experience, because think about this, if we can get people to spend more time with us, we've got them. If I can get someone to watch not only this video, but either get a cheat sheet and read more of my content or watch some of my content, I've got them. And not only that, they're giving me permission to deliver them something of value in Messenger. And Doreen and I talked about this today. The whole point of this strategy is not to just go to their Messenger and just drop something in it. I want to take advantage of having a conversation. Why? Conversations are the fastest path to cash. That is the reason my power content strategy exists is for me to be able to have conversations faster than pulling people through a funnel where they give me their name and email and then they watch a webinar and then they get my emails and all yada, yada, yada. I just want to give them something of value, get their permission to talk to them in Messenger and be helpful. 
So for instance, in this, I said, want to see the 30 minute training I did for my premium students that goes more in depth and shows you what type of ads to run? Drop me a line below and I'll shoot it over in Messenger. So people raise their hands and say, hey, I want that. And so here's what's super important, okay? A lot of people I see, they skip this step. If someone says, I want that, the first thing I do is I go and I say, hey, Jacob, I'm going to send you a message now. What is that doing? That's doing a couple of things. One, it's creating more engagement on this that's gonna bring it back to the top of someone else's newsfeed. It's gonna lower the cost of my ad and I'm letting him know that I'm sending him a message. Because what happens when we send a message to people we aren't friends with? It goes in some mysterious other promotions folder that Facebook has. Now they have that on Instagram too. So I always tell people in the comments that I'm going to send them a message. I also do that so that I don't lose track of who I talked to and who I didn't. Because a lot of times when I do this, we call it a two-step. And, and I have a way in-depth training that I'm going to show you guys how to get the resource for that. But sometimes these two steps can get out of line. Like one of the last ones I did a couple of weeks ago, I had 180 people to get back to. That's what happens over time. And so whenever I go back and comment to that person, it has a multiple of benefits. And one of those being, oh, <laughs> I remember who I've sent a message to and who I haven't, who, I, who have I talked to, right? And I was telling Doreen today, think about this. Would you rather have an email address or someone in Messenger? Having a conversation with someone. What do you think is more valuable? Having an email address or having, having a conversation going with someone in Messenger? Yeah, Messenger. And I don't use any fancy tools for this, guys. Like a lot of people are like, how do you not lose track? <laughs> I've got my messenger anytime, like I'm just going back in my messenger and I'm like, I scroll through my messenger and I'll go back about a month. I'm like, oh, I'm going to go back and check up on that person to see if they watched that thing that I gave them. I'm telling you guys, so many people do not use messenger. Like messenger is like the gold mine of money. Like just sitting there for people who actually need what you have. And I don't mean that like in a bad way. Like these are all people who need our help. A lot of times I just go and I just scroll through my messenger. I call it messenger roulette. And I just scroll and I'm like, where's the mouse going to stop? I'm just going to randomly check in on this person and see if, you know, I can randomly help them. Because then guess what? However I help them gives me idea for more content. Oh, I was chatting with, a, with you know, one of my followers today in messenger and they asked me this question. If they ask me this question, I'm sure a lot of you guys have this question, right? I use it for research and getting content. So we talked about the copy. Now, this is what goes above the video. Now, you guys are like, what the heck goes inside the video? Okay. Because remember, we want this to be three to five minutes long. So I have a format for that. Okay. What to say in the actual power content video. A lot of times people will put all of this as the copy for the video. Just so we're clear, the copy for the video ad will only be the headline promise of value and call to action, just like I have in this example right here. I'll blow it up just a little bit, right? Headline, promise of value, call to action. I, I'm telling people what I need them to do. So what I would say in this video, what is this? Oh, something we've already written. Headline, promise of value. So the beginning of the content in my actual video is going to be exactly what I said right here on the post, not reinventing the wheel. So headline promise of value call to action, humble brag, make it quick. <laughs> A lot of times whenever I am troubleshooting some of my students power content and they're like, I'm, I'm hitting the first KPI for through play, but after the first 15, 20 seconds, people are just not watching the rest of the video. And then I watch the video and they've talked about themselves for the next minute. 
So I always say humble brag, you know, make it easy, right? My name is Laura Portier and I am the owner of adcoachingfor7.com where I have now taught over 3,400 coaches, consultants, and service providers how to launch and optimize their very first ad strategies. That's it, right? That was what, one or two sentence, two, three sentence at most. And then what I'm gonna do right after that is I'm gonna repeat the promise of value. In the next five minutes, I'm gonna walk you through the best funnel to use if you want to book quality discovery calls. Because guys, people's attention span, by the time they, I started talking about myself for two to three sentences, they already forgot why they were watching the video. Quickly get them that promise of value again. Then go into the meat and potatoes and then end with the CTA. Right, so if I go back to this example right here, in my video, I'm gonna go, is your goal to book more discovery calls this month? Then don't use this funnel. You can see in the video, I'm actually pointing to my whiteboard saying, don't use this funnel. Give me five minutes and I'm gonna walk you through why one of the most popular funnel fails to convert quality calls, but not all is lost. I'm gonna show you the one thing that you could change about that funnel that's gonna start attracting people, right? That was my promise of value. Then I went into, Want to see the 30 minute training I did for my premium students, blah, 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 blah. Drop me a line in Messenger. For those of you guys who don't know me, my name is Laurel Portier and I am the owner of adcoachingfor7.com where I have now taught over 3,500 coaches, consultants, and service providers how to launch and optimize their very first ad strategy. And in the next five minutes, I'm going to show you why a funnel that most of you guys are more than likely using is the worst when it comes to booking quality discovery calls. See how I did that? Headline, promise of value, CTA. I did the same promise of value, but as Billy Big Shot Beats just pointed out, I just made a little variation on my promise of value. I just said it a little bit different so that it didn't seem redundant. You don't have to. I just, I, I'm so used to doing this formula. I can do it on the fly. And then I go into the meat and potatoes. And then I repeat my call to action. By the way, if you want to see the 30 minute training I did for my premium students that drop me a line below this video, I'll see you on the next video, right? And end it. It's not weird saying it to my organic audience at all. I say it over and over again. How many of you guys Show of hands, how many of you guys have probably memorized my humble brag by now because you've watched so many of my videos, you've heard me on my podcast, I use the same thing over and over again. It's instilled, right? Because think about this, and this is actually, Eric, this is actually a really good point. Think about this. It makes me highly referable, right? If my audience has memorized my humble brag, it makes me highly referable. Because next time someone says, hey, who's a Facebook ad expert, you know, <gasps> Laurel, she's now helped over 3,500 students and has ad coaching for seven.com, right? If you guys memorize that, boom, I'm highly referable. Yep, they'll remember your expertise and it makes me highly referable. That's what we wanna do is we want to repeat over and over again to our audience who we are, what we do and why they should listen to us. Remember, we're fighting for so many people's attention. Like me, like I am just one of thousands of people who teach Facebook ads. One of, but a lot of you guys are sitting on, sitting here because I stalked the heck out of you with my content, right? And it happened at tier two. It happened because I do this, okay? Okay, so I've got a couple of resources for you guys, and I will say that I'm going to give you guys three resources that I typically only share with my private clients. I did a power content workshop that gives you guys a really in-depth exercise of how I come up with the content. It goes beyond the 15 pieces of content that a lot of you guys know me for. Um, it's actually called a belief builder exercise. I also go into detail about that. So also a lot of you guys are like, how the heck do I create a value bomb? I've got the value bomb workshop here. This is actually one that I did with my lean on Laurel students, not very long ago. And then in, in case you guys 
want to go deep on how I get people in messenger and sell them, um, and give value. I have my client accelerator two-step workshop. Um, so these are three resources that are like hour long workshops that go way in depth. So I'm going to give you guys, by the way, whenever I give you guys the replay and we'll have it either today or tomorrow, I'm going to post the replay in the group. Um, I'm going to post this document in there too, so that you guys have all the links to this too. So you guys know, I'm always going to hook you up. Okay. Now the fun stuff, fun, fun, fun. Okay. How do we know if our if our power content is doing good? Ooh. KPI is before moving forward, okay? So before we move forward with doing any other type of content, we want to make sure that our power content is rock solid because this is going to be the evergreen content that we're just gonna let sit inside the Facebook manager and just deliver us the right type of audience day in, day out, whether you're on Facebook or not. Wouldn't that be awesome if just like you could leverage Facebook advertising to just deliver you the audiences so you don't have to go and, you know, message people in groups and go into groups, which by the way, that that strategy works really freaking well organically. But for some of us, we have other things to do. And so what we're going to do is we're gonna look for two KPIs before we move forward, okay? So the first thing I do is before I have 5,000 impressions. Now, if you guys have been with me a while, I used to say 2,000. Now the Facebook algorithm takes a lot longer to optimize. As a matter of fact, my Lean on Laurel students always laugh when I say this, but once you launch an ad, open up a bottle of wine and don't look at it for seven to 10 days. So wait until you have drank seven bottles of wine <laughs> until, looking, <laughs> until looking at your ads manager. Um, so what we're looking for, 15 cents per through play before 5,000 impressions. And then what we're looking for is we want it to start trending towards $1 per 100% video view. Guys, think about this. Whenever I worked in television, you know how much people paid for a 30 second spot in Dr. Phil? <laughs> 2000 freaking dollars for one 30 second spot in Dr. Phil. Facebook advertising is still, even though everyone complains about it, it is still by far the best thing for your book to get in front of your audience. Okay. $1 per 100% video view. Think about that. You can get a thousand people to watch 100% of your video for like a thousand dollars. Crazy. So here's my, I'll blow it up just a little bit. So here's what I mean. Okay. So whenever you're in your ads manager, what you want to do is you want to make sure that it is on video engagement. So inside your ads manager, there's a little thing at the top that says performance. You're gonna to toggle where it says performance to video engagement and then voila. You can see your cost per through play and then you could see how much you've spent. You could see how many people you've reached. Um, you can see how many people have watched it 25%. You could see how many people have watched it 50%, 75%, 95%, 100%, okay? Now, Here's something that is super, super important. Okay, you guys listening? One of the things that you want to make absolute sure that you do is that you make your power content polarizing as hell. Okay, now what do I mean by that? We want to protect our ecosystem. We do not want to spend money retargeting people who will not be a good fit. Up here, I'm super polarizing because I want most of the people that I work with at a higher level want to book calls. And so a lot of my content is centered around getting people calls, okay? One of my agency clients, 
he runs a direct marketing company that works with seven figure e-commerce stores. Seven figure e-commerce stores, not five figure e-commerce stores, not six figure e-commerce stores. Now, when I say that you want to be super polarizing, he always begins his video by saying, if your e-commerce store is not at seven figures, do not watch this video. This strategy will not work if you have a five-figure e-commerce store or a six-figure. You must be at seven figures in order for this strategy to work. What is he doing there? We are repelling people who are, po who, who are not our ideal audience. Like, of course, some people are going to be looking loose and they're going to watch anyway, but for the most part, we want to be polarizing. We want to make sure that our power content is attracting the right type of people. Okay. So if we take a look at what I've done here and don't worry, I'm going to show you guys how to, how I set these up and, and how to know like whether what's, what's not working. But if we're looking here, okay, we can see this first one, right? Can you guys see, I've blown it up a little bit. Can you guys, you guys are good. Cool. So this first one, you can see, you can see who I target. I've done so many targeting, like I know that Marie Forleo, Frank Kern, Russell Brunson, and Amy Porterfield are my four people, like the big four. I call them the big four in my business because I know they have my audience, without a doubt. Frank Kern teaches webinars and brand building, you know, visibility ads. Marie Forleo teaches people how to build their business with webinars and all that fun stuff. Russell Brunson, click funnel king, right? People who follow Russell Brunson definitely, you know, have webinars. And so they're my peeps. So if I'm looking at this, Marie Forleo, this is a video on how to retarget people who have watched your webinar. What am I doing? I'm attracting people who are probably running a webinar, right? Very, I'm being very strategic with what it, what my power content video contains. Um, another one is my ping pong video strategy. Um, and should you do a light campaign? You get that question a lot. So if we look at the first one, my cost per through play is seven cents. I've spent $129. So by the way, I, I run these at $5 a day per ad set. Okay. So that first one, Marie Forleo webinar retargeting, that video is $5 a day. Frank Kern webinar retargeting, that video is $5 a day. Okay. So Marie Forleo webinar retargeting, I've spent $129. I've got 849 people who've watched at least 25% of that video. 331 people who've watched at 50%, 171 people at 75%, and 129 people at 95%, and 120 at 100%. Just shy of a dollar per 100% video view, right? I did get 95% to watch for $1. I'm not going to touch that. It's so close, right? Why would I turn that? Why would I turn that? It's, it's trending in the right direction. This next one, the same thing. Frank Kern webinar retargeting. I, I spent 96 bucks. I've gotten 89 people to watch at 100%. I'm okay with that. Webinar retargeting. People who are watching that video 100%, they're definitely my peeps. If someone has watched a webinar retargeting video, they're not only doing their own ads or have ads running, like they're, they're not a beginner, right? Um, Russell Brunson webinar retargeting. I paid $85 and I've got 97, 100%. So that's on right on KPI. This one right here, the ping pong video strategy, killing it, right? 114 plays at hundred percent and I've only paid 78 bucks. So you guys get the point. My power content's working. What you guys don't see is there's a couple of videos down here that didn't work. <laughs> I turned them off. But these are these were the winners, and I run them at five dollars a day. Now here's the thing: if you only have, you know, three hundred dollars a month to spend on ads, you're probably only going to run two videos at five dollars a day, right? Because five dollars a day times thirty, right? That's one hundred and fifty dollars for one video. So if you only have three hundred dollars a month to spend, you're probably going to only spend, you know, five dollars a day on two videos. So only spend with what you can what you can have. Someone actually asked the question the other day. Laurel, I only have about $150 to spend. I only have $5 a day. Is that enough? Yes. Any little bit helps. I've got students that are running this, the power content at a dollar a day. 
a dollar a day over 365 days, that can, that can do a lot of good. Okay. So even if you only have a dollar a day to spend, this is the best dollar you're going to spend. So what happens if your power content isn't working? Okay. Let's see if I can get this back. There we go. Okay. So what happens if your power content is not working? I don't even know how I wrote on that thing. <laughs> I made a red line for somehow. Um, power content not, not working. So let's troubleshoot our way through it. Okay. So let's first talk about how I set up the ads. Okay. So if we go back to, remember, I have that video, it's called webinar retargeting. Okay. So let's say that you have your webinar retargeting, my webinar retargeting video. Okay. This will be the very first video that I place. What I'm going to do is I'm going to run this video to four different audiences or five audiences, however. So Timothy just asked what happens when Facebook tells you that your budget is too low and won't run your ad. It won't do that for power content. It, that Facebook always says that your budget's too low when it comes to retargeting ads or to uh, conversion ads. I've never seen Facebook tell me that my budget is too low to run video ads. I've never had that happen. If you, if it does happen, just ignore it. Facebook gives you all kinds of BS. <laughs> Almost everything that Facebook suggests to you is, is BS. Like it's just ignore it. Um, so power, if your power content's not working, here's how I know whether it's the content or the audience. Okay. So I have this webinar retargeting video up here. I've got the ping pong strategy video and the like campaign video. Those are my three pieces of power content, okay? So if I'm just starting out, like for instance, like let's say I start running stuff for Eric, I'm gonna have him send me three pieces of power content video. But what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna, I'm gonna pick one of the videos. Now there's no rhyme or reason, I just pick one. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run it three to five audiences. Now, here's the thing. With Doreen, when she sent me her three pieces of power content video, her niche is so small. I don't need to test all of these audiences. I know that if I target parents of high school students, those are my peeps, right? So in her case, if I run the content and people aren't engaging with it, I know it's the content. In this way, right? In this way, I knew I was waiting for my dogs to start barking because the UPS guy just dropped off the package. Sorry, I was pausing. I was bracing for my dogs to start barking. So with her, I know that my audience isn't going to work. And with Eric, if Eric sends me three pieces of video and I'm going to run them to three to five audiences, I know, like, here's the thing. A lot of people think that targeting is so hard. It is not. Facebook makes targeting so freaking easy. Like, don't overthink it. So many people overthink their targeting so badly, okay? Like, for instance, one of my Lean on Laurel students, he's running a challenge on, um, on how to do better trading. Like, he, he teaches people how to, how to get better return on the stock market and all that stuff. One of, it, one of his ad sets, we're just running to day trading. <laughs> That's it, nothing fancy. Another one we're doing to um, trading strategies. Like we're not doing a lot of fancy stuff. Like inside the program, if you just watch like this video right here, the get ready protocol, building your audiences, I show you three very, very simple ways how to, how to actually do your audiences. Very, very simple. So... Webinar retargeting video. How do we know our power content is not working? If I place this first video and all of the audiences that I'm running this video fail to get me that 15 second through play, then I know my audiences are off. But I almost guarantee that your audience isn't going to be off. It's more than likely going to be your content. Okay. So let's say I'm not getting 15 cents per through play. And I'm running it to three to five audiences. Then I know I need to fix my content topic. Okay. 
if you fail to meet through play KPIs, it's more than likely your topic. Okay. If you aren't getting anywhere close to 100% video views for a dollar, then what we need to do, okay, this is going to be the tricky part. If we're not getting anywhere close to a dollar. What we're going to do is we're going to go back into our ads manager and we're going to look at our KPIs here. And we're going to see, okay, if they're get they're, they've watched 15%, they've watched the first 15 seconds of the video, but my 25% view is super low. So let's say I had, so let's pretend that this Marie Forleo webinar retargeting, let's pretend that through plays are fine. My cost per through play is great. But when I get to video plays, only five people have watched 25% of that video. What do you guys, what do you guys think went, went wrong? They got through my intro. They got through my headline promise of value, but they're not watching, but I'm getting low 25% video views. What do you guys think is the issue? I probably spent too much time talking about myself and I didn't get to the content fast enough. If I'm losing people about the 50%, then the content sucks. So what I have people do to fix that is I always tell people, if you got them through the through play, and you get them through your humble brag, those aren't the issue. What we need to work on is holding people's attention. You are either too boring or the content you, you overpromised and your content just sucked. It doesn't, it doesn't get like that much scientific than that. Like I literally, what I do with my students is we just go through and we try to figure out where did people drop off? Facebook gives us all this data and I do the same thing with my YouTube videos. If you go to your analytics for your YouTube videos, you can see where people drop off. And so that's how we're checking to see whether or not our power content is hitting the mark. So that is the first $5 strategy that I teach inside the program, okay? That is the first type of $5 ad strategy. So Trevor asked a really good question. How do you figure out what type of content to make? It's all centered around your offer. Who do you want to attract and what is your offer? So if you want to try to figure out what type of content to actually make, if you go to the organic strategies, seven day organic marketing sprint and go to how to create 15 pieces of content. It's an old exercise that I use, how to create 15 pieces of content in less than five minutes. This is a really good exercise for power content. But you have to, you have to know, right? It all goes back to this. It all goes back to the funnel. What is your offer, right? So for instance, Doreen, she knows that she, she wants to teach, you know, she wants to help parents and their students and her parents and students, her, their parents and their children get into their dream college in a way that's not going to make them pull their hair out. Some of the best power content for her to do would be, what are some of the, the main mistakes that parents are making right now? Like today, her and I just talked about, you know, a good, con a good piece of power content for her to do is a lot of parents that she's talking to they're putting down double deposits on two schools to make sure that their child gets at, in, into at least one. And so she says that that's not a good idea for a certain reason. And so I was like, that's awesome. That's a, that's a mistake that a lot of parents are making. That's gonna draw them in. That's good power content. Now, here's the thing, guys. When you're figuring out your power content, I always want to use my power content as market research. If you're planning on building a webinar, 
your three pieces of power content can be ba -da, da da the three bullet points that you're planning to do in your webinar, right? What better way than to test the content that you're planning to put in your webinar than with pieces of power content, right? If you're planning on doing a challenge, put your challenge content and pieces of power content, put it in front of the audience and see if it holds their attention. We want to use power content. Now, here's the thing. Power content involves you knowing your audience and knowing what they want and what they don't want. It gives us an opportunity to have, you know, good conversations with our audience to see like the conversations that are going to come up once we do power content just gives us more room for more power content. Anytime that I have a conversation with a student, I write it down and I'm going to show you guys another exercise that I, that I teach my students on how to expand on their power content when it comes to tier two. Okay. So Eric just asked the question, you or Doreen are using the three video power content as the funnel, right? It's the top of funnel. It's the first step of the funnel, because remember, they don't have to watch all three videos. So if we go back to the funnel, right? The funnel is power content to messenger to phone call. That's the, that's the funnel, right? So he, so Eric asked, so I'm not going to send them a link to sign up for my funnel, but rather my offer. So if you're doing power content, right? You want to have a conversation. Now you can make that choice whether or not to send them. So I'll give I'll actually give you guys a really good example. Okay. I'll give you guys a really good example. Whenever I launched lean on Laurel, I'll actually turn my video on. So whenever I launched Lean on Laurel, I used it through power content, okay? I didn't have a mini webinar. You would think, well, Laurel runs Facebook ads. Why wouldn't she have a webinar? I like to talk to people, okay? Here's the thing. When I did, when I did my, my, my power content, remember how I told you that post had 180 people? That was a lot of talking to people, right? A lot of questions about the program. A lot of concerns. Am I qualified? Am I not qualified? I took all of that information that I had from those conversations and I built a 10 to 15 minute mini webinar that addressed everything that me and those, those people in Messenger had been talking about. What were the repeat questions? What were the repeat concerns? What were the repeat questions about the actual strategy they would be doing? I put all of that into a mini webinar that I just put on a landing page, okay? So now, whenever I'm doing my two steps, I'm doing my power content and the messenger conversation turns to lean on Laurel, I just tell them, go watch this video. Not making them opt in. I already got them talking in messenger. I'm going and I'm giving them the mini webinar. And so all I'm doing is I'm sending them, I'll actually show you guys what I mean. So now my organic process and my paid ad power content has allowed me to build a mini webinar that I know is going to address all of the concerns that my audience has. I've already validated it. Remember, paid advertising is just organic content with money on it. So I've used power content. And Doreen, I'll tell you, Lean on Laurel has like has been full ever since I've done this. We just have a short waiting list now. But I went from power content, having conversations, to building this out based on the conversations. What is that? What am I doing now? I don't have to have long drawn out me messenger conversations now because I can do this now with a little less effort. Now I've created a presentation that people can watch and that people want, right? So Eric says, I guess I'm just confused about what conversation of brick and mortar. This is not for brick and mortar. This is to get discovery calls, this strategy right here. 
It's okay. This it's okay. That's why we that's why we have that. That's why I was like, this is this is why we to book 20 to 25 discover the calls, right? It's okay though. It's okay. Here's the thing. Here's the thing, okay? Very simple. I'm gonna whenever I get to the five hundred dollar video funnel, Eric, I I have something that you're gonna like. Okay, just hang with me till we get there. Okay, no, this is good because someone else who's gonna watch this video is gonna think the same thing. I have something a much easier. You have a much easier process than what I'm, but it's gonna be relevant. It's gonna be super relevant to you. I promise. Okay. So this is what we did, right? Does everyone get how I proved my content? I validated it before I spent any money building a funnel on fancy software, right? Before anything. Does anyone have any questions so far before we get into the fun stuff? Because I know a lot of you guys are in to see this funnel right here. By the way, what I'm putting together is a new resource. Actually, um, his name is Chris. He asked it in the Ask Floral a couple of weeks ago. He was like, could I get some examples of people's power content? And I was like, what better resource to have? And so I'm gonna need your help. When you do your power content and you have winning power content that is hitting KPIs, it's getting engagement, in your sense, it is winning. I'm gonna, I'm gonna ask you to tag me in the Facebook group and just hashtag winning power content. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start making a spreadsheet by niche. So, so Eric, he will have like, he'll have like some resources of how brick and mortar businesses are doing power content. You know, Doreen will have, you know, some examples of power content, how, you know, online coaching people are doing their content. And so basically we're going to make a resource so that we could all share our versions of our power content to inspire other people. Yeah. Billy says he needs to check his power content. So Billy is a music producer. He does this. I have a lot of brick and mortar businesses. So I, I, I have an offline business and I have an online business. Um, as a matter of fact, here in town, it's a very small town. I help a local restaurant with their stuff. And guess what? We do power content. So hang tight there. So I'm going to make this new resource. Okay. So all we're going to be doing here. Okay. This is top of funnel power content that we've been going over. Now, right here, this power content workshop, how to create great content to attract buyers. This will show you a very simple exercise that's called Stealth Influence. I actually learned it from my mentor, Nick Peterson. He has allowed me to share the exercise with my students. So this resource right here, if you're wondering like, okay, I've got my three pieces of power content, they are performing. What type of videos should I go live with? And so this is what I recommend, right? Right here. So if we go here, $500 a month. Here's what we do, okay? This is an exact replica of what I'm doing with Doreen. This is actually an exact replica. I don't know if Richard's here, one of my other students. This is an exact replica of what I do for my $7 program. And what is it? I don't take calls for my $7 program. I sell a seven dollar, but I'm using this exact same, this exact same funnel because if I can get people in Messenger to talk to me, I'm selling them into my seven dollar program at least. Almost everyone I get in the Messenger will buy my seven dollar program. But this is what this looks like. Okay, this is exactly what this looks like. So phase one, power content, right? You don't have to do a value bomb. Doreen, for instance, she offers a value bomb. It is a checklist. Um, that she said she's going to deliver to a messenger, nine things every junior has to have accomplished before their senior year, super high value, right? So that's phase one, our power content, $5 a day, okay? So if you are running $5 a day, this is going to give you about $450 a month just on power content. But here's the thing, okay? Here's the thing. If we don't have enough traffic, and this is where a lot of people go wrong, 
If we don't have enough traffic, if we're not putting enough money here, we will not have enough audience to do the other two strategies. So if I'm running a thought, if I have $500 a month or if I have $300 a month, I am spending it all here for a good chunk of the time. Because remember, in order for them to get the other two, they have to have watched at least 25% of this video. So if I don't have, right, if I don't have enough traffic, if I go up here, right, and I zoom in, okay, I've got 918 people. Well, no, 918 plus 1,000 plus 779 plus, I got a couple of thousand people right here, right? So I can make a custom audience of anyone who's watched 25% of any of these videos. And then I can send them phase two, which by the way is in the program, the ATM strategy. And then phase number three, all I'm doing is I'm boosting post. Okay. So Asia just asked a really good question. Is there a KPI on how many conversations should we start with our top of funnel content? Good question. We will want to, this is gonna differ for everyone, but here's the thing, okay? Yes, confirming that she asked is the objective for video views. Yes, okay? I'm, do, I, I'm gonna start with 25% video views to make this audience. Now, here's the thing. This strategy is going to take some patience. Let's say you're getting video views. People are watching all the way to the end, but let's say people are not raising their hands saying that they want the thing. Maybe the thing wasn't so great, right? Maybe your content was good, but the freebie you gave away wasn't good. And one of the things that I want to make absolutely clear, okay? If you guys are doing value bombs, right? The, the giveaway thing. You want to make sure that the thing that you want people to raise their hand for is super valuable. I always, this is what I always tell people, a good value bomb will hurt you to give it away for free. Like I, a lot of times in my value bomb, I will literally give away things that I only have in my lean on moral program and make it super, super valuable. Like I'm like, oh, I can't believe I just get like, you know, like th things I put like in as my value bonds, like I'm like, man, that's something I give away in my paid thing. But what does that do? Helps the person, builds my credibility. And that person just, I build authority and credibility with people. And it's all I do is I'm like, my whole strategy throughout this entire process is to give value. That's it. Like, I don't worry about like a lot of, another question I get. Another question I get all the time is, Laurel, how do I know that I'm giving too much away? I don't worry about giving anything away because people don't pay for my information. All of you guys are sitting here paying me because you guys have access to me in this program, right? And in a minute, I'm going to open it up to Q&A. You guys are going to get access to me for Q&A. That's what you guys are paying for. That's what people pay for. They pay for a faster path to get where they're going. And so a lot of people want to hide behind their, people can Google almost anything these days, honestly. They're paying for you to help them organize it so that they can get accelerated results. People are like, well, what's the difference between Lean on Laurel and, you know, the $7 program? Lean on Laurel, you get me. Like Doreen and I had a, you know, a conversation today, one-on-one, -on -one. We went through her entire process. We talked through power content. She's not mad that I'm giving you guys her strategy. Are you Doreen? <laughs> right? Doreen, Doreen's in my higher level and I'm just showing you guys what I'm doing here because the point is Doreen's not paying for a Google document. And so that's what I always tell people, right? People aren't going to pay you for information they're paying you for a shorter path or a better path to get to where they're going. Really good questions tonight. Really good questions tonight. So phase two, right? 
So phase two, what we're gonna do is we're gonna retarget the people who've done this. So in Doreen's case, she's working on getting me some testimonials. I've given her the framework to do a case study interview with one of her clients and their parent. And then I had her do a power offer ad, which I learned from Joel Irway. If I offer to do X, Y, and Z over the next you know, couple of weeks where you didn't have to do thing that you hate, would you take me up on the offer? Very simple. And we're just like telling them to, we're running, we're running these right here. So Doreen, remember how I told you guys, Doreen doesn't have a physical funnel. If you, if you have a physical funnel, like let's say you want to retarget people to a discovery call and you have an application process, you can link them in these ads to your application. But what we're doing with Doreen, we're running a messenger objective. So when people click the button, it just takes them straight to messenger. And I have an automated thing that says, you know, here, you know, or do you want to talk to Doreen about a navigation call or something like that? Because in her call to action for these, they all lead to her navigation call. Click the link below to chat with me in Messenger and see how I can help you over a navigation call. And then every single week, Doreen, what did I ask you to do? Give me one either live video or pre recorded video once a week. And all we're going to do is we're going to boost that, that video content. Now, every time, okay, once you have the power content, because remember, the power content is going to do the heavy lifting for you. You leave that, that's evergreen. So anytime that you're posting on your business page, you always want to have a call to action. Doreen has two calls to action. She does free webinars on Wednesday nights, Q&A with parents and students. And then the second thing is that she has a navigation call that's a paid call. Those are her two offers. And so one week she's going to promote the navigation call. One week she's going to promote the live web, the pre-live webinar. Okay. So I'm going to say this one more time. Okay, because Billy said, should power content one, two, three go straight to phase two? Yes. They only have to watch. If we go back, I just want to make sure we're absolutely clear on this. They only have to watch one of these videos to get to the next level. Now, if you guys are familiar with my ping pong video strategy, that's in the, that's in the, um, that's in the, the program. The ping pong strategy is a more advanced version of this, where we will send cold traffic to all three videos and all people have to do is watch one of those videos to get to the next level. But what we're also doing is if people watch video number one, 25% or more, they're going to get phase two and phase three, but they're also going to get the other two videos they didn't watch. That's why I call it the ping pong strategy. We're ping ponging the audience back and forth from these three videos, but we're also giving them more content. Are you guys starting to understand like how effective this can be with like a very small budget? Like, a lot of my students who are in my higher level program have not even built a funnel because this is so effective. I do this more than I do any other type of ad. And this is how I have been able to build my audience. Now, your daily budget for your boost, this is what I do. Now you can do whatever you want. I do $10 and I let it go for three days. Now, here's something else, okay? Because we're 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 just talking, we're just jamming, right? I want to open your I want to open your minds to things. We can get a little fancier with this strategy, right? Once we boost these videos, let's say you boost a video, and you see that, like, if you guys don't know, you could you could actually pick your objective for boosted post now. The only difference between a boosted post and a Facebook ad is that a boosted post has an expiration date. So that's why I like boosted posts because I do so much content that I'm like, okay, cool. I'm going to boost this video for a couple of days. But let's say, right, let's say I boost a post and I see like in my ads manager, I'm like, holy crap, I got a couple of sales from that boosted post. 
I'm going to add that into the ads manager so that it runs all the time instead of having an expiration date. So I'll take my boosted post and I'll run it for $2 a day here. For people who are a little bit more advanced, you guys will start to see that I'm building the hot seven retargeting sequence. It's an advanced retargeting sequence I teach to my higher level. But the first two videos are the ATM strategy that I teach in the seven dollar program. So you guys can see like, you can get, you can get pretty freaking fancy with this. So in Doreen's case, right, we're running video view campaigns, phase two, our messenger campaigns, because remember, she doesn't have a sales page. She doesn't have a, a funnel to, to send people to. Like she just wants to, to get them in messenger and move them to a phone call. That's it. Or give them a cheat sheet, right? Having a conversation. In my case, phase two is a link to my $7 program. And I'm running a conversion campaign for $2 a day. I'm also running a reach campaign at $2 a day. Here's the thing. Okay. If you're just starting out and this audience isn't that large, run a reach campaign. I run a conversion campaign because I have 30, 40,000 people in my warm audience. And so I want to re optimize that. But whenever I first started and what I do with my agency clients, these are reach campaigns. Unless you have a huge retargeting audience, reach campaigns at $2 a day. It's up to you. You can run it as a conversion campaign. But here's my reasoning why I love reach campaigns, right? Here's my reasoning is if people are visiting my, my ad coaching for seven site, my, my sales page, those people are already interested in my program. Why would I tell Facebook to optimize for sales? They've already visited my sales page, right? So that's why I like reach campaigns because Facebook optimizes that to reach as many people in that audience as possible. So most of the time I'll run a reach campaign for, I, as a matter of fact, do reach campaigns for 90% of my retargeting ads. I run a lot of reach campaigns, but it does vary and it does depend on what you're trying to go for. So phase three, your boosted post, you can do it as an engagement, because boost, boosted post, it'll, it'll ask you what you want Facebook to do. Deliver more video views, deliver purchases, deliver stuff. So you could actually tell Facebook what you want delivered. Okay, so where's Eric? Oh, I see Eric. Okay. So if I were doing this, I'll, I'll give an example. Eric, what kind of business do you, do you run ads to? <laughs> So I'll use, so back whenever I first started my business, I ran ads um, for a mattress store, freaking mattress store, right? Here's the thing, okay? When you're running, when you're doing power content and it doesn't matter whether you have a physical product, right? I run power content for e-commerce products. We run power content for brick and mortar businesses. The number one thing when you're running the power content how are you filling the gap in the marketplace? I'll give you an example, okay? Whenever I was running ads for the mattress store in little old Apache Junction, Arizona, it was Carlos who owned the mattress store. And Carlos used to work at Mattress Firm. He was one of the main general managers for Mattress Firm. And so the very first conversation I had with him, we met at Denny's. I never forget it. I had coffee. He had Dr. Pepper. And whenever I was asking him about what he could do different than all of the other mattress stores, it was just the most amazing power content that just started popping up in my head. Okay. He told me that he had quit his job at mattress store because he wanted to spend time with his daughters. And he showed me a picture he got out of his wallet. He showed me his three daughters. And he was like, Laurel, let's take a run to my store and I'll show you. He's like what it looks like and all that stuff. And so when I walked with him to his truck, he had this big like truck that had, um, God, I forget what is a uh, cloud nine mattress. And I was like, oh, cool. So you use your truck for business. He's like, oh yeah. He's like, check this out. He's like, 
as soon as customers buy the mattress, I just throw it in back of my truck and I purse, I follow them home and deliver it right then and there. And I was like, whoa, wait a minute. Like if I go buy a mattress from all the big guys, what do they do? They make me wait like days. And then it's the most inconvenient thing. So he had already told me a couple of things where he was filling the gap. He also told me when we got to the store, it was this very small, like almost like it was at a strip mall, but it was very narrow. And he was like, I don't spend a lot of, I don't have a lot of overhead. This is a family ran business. Like me and my daughter both take turns manning the store. And so he's like, I don't have a lot of overhead so I could offer better prices than everyone else. Again, filling the gap, right? And so it's super important whenever you are doing your power content, I'll give you another example, Christina, I don't know if Christina is on here. Um, she runs a daycare, right? She runs a marketing agency for daycares. She also owns a daycare, I believe. Um, and so her and I were actually going through this exercise as far as power content. And I was helping her, what do you guys do different that fills the gap? And she's like, well, we run our daycare on the weekend. A lot of other daycares in the area are not open on the weekend and we're bilingual. Those are two very important things that can very well fill the gap. I'll give you an example for a restaurant, okay? Phoenix restaurant, one of my very, one of my very favorite things, they serve New York pizza. They fly the freaking water in from New York so it actually tastes like New York style pizza, right? They're in a downtown location with a parking lot. All of the other locations don't have a parking lot. It's hell to park, right? So what we're doing is we are filling the gap. So we have to figure out whether it's a restaurant, right? Like this town, like in this little town that I'm in, little South Bayou town, Gaydon, Louisiana, um, the, the restaurant I work for here in town, they fill the gap because they always have fresh live boiled crawfish and live music. There's no live music venue for miles and miles. Everyone has to go to the big city if they wanna see live music. Well, not anymore. So we could actually market to the neighboring towns within 20, 30 miles to come here. We're filling the gap. So if we run those types of power content, right? The brand story, why did they start this business, right? People want to know about their local business that they're going to support, right? Like Carlos in the mattress store, one of his pieces of power content was like, hey guys, you know, so why should you come to me for your mattress? You know, I'm just a regular guy. I used to work at mattress firm and, you know, I decided to quit my job there because I want to spend more time with my family and start a family business. What is that doing? Relate. He's making himself relatable. Like he got to the point where like people were walking in and being like, Carlos, like they knew him by name because of this. And all he had was $500 a month to spend on ads. I built this exact same funnel. Here's what we did. We skipped this part. We skipped phase two. And most of the time with, with business, with local businesses, I'll skip phase two. I'll do phase one. We'll run power content and then we'll just use boosted posts. So let's say we're running power content to the, to Carlos's mattress store, right? He's got his brand story. He's got his, I can do this truck and follow you home. And three, I could offer lower prices. Those are where his three pieces of power content. We ran that evergreen $5 a day. And anytime he would do a post about a sale, upcoming sale, we would just boost it to the people who've been engaging with his content. And so we built up his audience because here's the thing. You're only going to buy a mattress every couple of years, right? I think eight years is the, is the thing. And so what we would do is we would, I would have him do Facebook lives. He would show people how to, how to take care of their mattresses, like get out, you know, pee stains and how to get out wine stains. We came out with all kinds of fun content that kept his audience engaged because here's the thing, we're building a long-term relationship, right? We're offering a long-term relationship. We're building that. And so that's how you would do this strategy for a brick and mortar business. Or if you're doing an e-commerce, right? If you have an e-commerce product, how is your product filling the gap? What does your product do different? Is it vegan, right? Filling the gap. Filling the gap. So, so Jay just asked, 
So filling the gap quote is about offering something extra others don't and highlighting it. Exactly. For instance, the other day, <clears throat> I was sitting in my doctor's office. How many of you guys sit in your doctor's office and you're like, God, if I could find a doctor that would actually take me at my appointment time, I don't give a shit how much extra he costs. I would go to that doctor because they would take me at that appointment time. I'm like one of those people. I don't like sitting in a doctor's office that, you know, that they take you an hour later to waste a freaking time. If they had a local doctor that would, that would literally fill the gap with that, they would have me as a customer. Plumbers the same way. One of my, actually one of my um, agency clients, she was telling me the story the other day and she tells this story in her mini webinar because she teaches her students how to fill the gap where she had a, 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 a pipe bust or something in her house and she started calling all these plumbers. And then all of a sudden she, she, she got a hold of one plumber, his answering service. And on his answering service, it said, Hey, leave your number. I promise I will call you back today and I will guarantee I can make it to your house tomorrow. Leave your name and number and I promise I'll get back to you. What did he do there? He filled the gap. What do all plumbers always say? They take forever to get back to you. They have to get you. You have to wait like two weeks for them to come. This plumber was smart and he, he had his offer, right? That's an offer that he guaranteed, he promised that if you leave your name and number, he will get back to you today and be in your house tomorrow. That is filling the gap. Okay. Okay. So we've gone over a lot today. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to allow you guys to unmute yourselves. I have given you guys everything that you need in order to troubleshoot your power content. Okay. If you're not sure what's wrong with your power content, go back and rewatch this video. We've gone over everything, but in the case that I did not, I want to open it up for questions so that if I didn't miss anything, or I didn't answer a question that you have, um, go ahead. We can unmute ourselves and give me a break from talking. So, so if someone has a question, just unmute yourself and just go for it. I have a question. Okay, I was about to say, was I that good, Darian? <laughs> yes, you were awesome as always. Um, I did post in the chat, but I guess the, the quick version would be, is our reactions a good gauge? The number of reactions that your videos are getting, or are you only looking at 100% views? I don't look at reactions because a lot of people will just go and like stuff just to like stuff, that's just their thing. I'm looking for things that will actually move the needle. One, are people watching? And two, are people actually commenting and starting a conversation? Those are the only two things I care about. The only reason I'm asking that is because I ran a campaign for a client and she had very, she had $1 per 100 views, but we ran traffic to that audience. It did mm -hmm. not do very well. I actually got nothing from it. And she had a very low reaction. So I'm wondering if, I know high reaction doesn't mean anything, but if low reaction, does that mean maybe we should be switching the type of content, even though we're getting the hundred percent views? Well, what were what were what was she wanting people to do? What was the action? It's so the action was basically to watch more content, to comment below, get feedback. So we weren't as clear. She didn't have a lead magnet, right? Yeah, so she you didn't have a clear, you didn't have enough clear. You didn't have something juicy enough for people to raise their hands saying, "I want that." Got it. Got it. Got it. If, if, if you're running power content and you're not getting comments, you have to look at is what I'm offering as a bonus, just because it's free doesn't mean people are going to raise their hand saying, I want that. Right. Mm -hmm. Another thing that I will do whenever I launch my cold power content, I will ask a couple of my students to go and say, I want that <laughs> on the ad just to give some traction because sometimes people will see that ad and they'll just see the comments and they're like, wait, what are people commenting for? And then they'll go back and watch the video and then ask for the thing. So that's one of the ways that I kind of shortcut the success of the power content. Got it. Thank you so much. You're awesome. Yep, absolutely. I got the chat turned off guys. So if you guys just unmute yourself.
Hey, Laurel, can you hear me? Hey, Christina. <laughs> so uh, I have a quick question about retargeting video views. Now, do you only retarget 25% or should we be doing like 25%, 50%, 75 and 100? Great question. It depends on how big those audiences are, right? Because your 25% audience is always going to be the biggest. So that's why I always start there. Um, now me, like I've been running power content a lot and like my clients, like we spent thousands of dollars, like on power content. So we'll probably target like 50% or more, but a lot, most of the time I'm using 25% or more, but it's up to you, right? Like if you, if you like, for instance, I'll actually like tell you guys. So some people, like whenever I first built this strategy, it was an actual video funnel where we would do video number one. If they watch video number one, they would get video number two. If they watch video number two, they would get video number three. If they watch video number three, we would send them to an application to book a call. Still works really good. But here's why I don't teach that at this level anymore is because people don't send enough traffic to that first video for them to even make it to the, to the last video. So it's so you guys can get as creative with this as, as possible. Like if you like, cause like, let's say like, if you have three pieces of power content and you make them watch video number one to video number two to video number three, and they book a call, what is that taking the place of a three-part video series funnel? Yeah. Right. And so I, I want to show you guys all of these different options that you guys have to utilize power content in a way that's going to serve you guys. And so let's say you want someone that's super, that's super qualified, then you're probably going to want to retarget people who watched hundred percent of that video. But the caveat to that is, do you have enough people who've watched hundred percent of the video to be able to retarget? And how much is enough? Like how many people? Thou you have to have at least a thousand people in an audience. A thousand people. That's the goal. Okay. Yep. All yep. Right. So that's why we typically start with 25% first. Okay. Thank you. Yep, absolutely. And if you have a $500, you know, a month budget, you're probably going to stay in phase one for two months. Let's just be real. Like we're, you're probably going to spend two months building up that, that phase one audience. Eric. Hey, um, so back, I'm sorry to take all this time, but uh, for the brick and mortar stuff that I'm working with, um, <laughs> I'm uh, specifically working with like a charity that for Give Nola Day on May 3rd. Um, so does this kind of stuff even does these strategies work for a timed event? And if so, because you keep throwing out a couple of numbers, like 10 days and this, that, like how far ahead of an event, like if you have a sale or a big promotion, or like a, I saw somebody promoting like a, whatever, they're promoting mm -hmm. something, but it's a, a timed event that's only for this time. How far yep. ahead should you start this kind of stuff? So here's the thing. This is a more of a visibility strategy. This isn't like a fast action type strategy. Okay. And so for instance, like if you were running an event, I would, and you wanted to use power content, like for a charity, like I would probably use power content with a strong call to action to that. If you want it, I would, I would take a more direct marketing approach than a visibility brand building approach. Okay. okay. That's a good question though. That's a good question. Knowing the difference between the two, like this is a long-term strategy. I would not use this. I'll give you guys an example. So for, um, on Amy Porterfield's last launch, for think like an expert, we, she had us run power content and see, she does a lot of all of the big experts do this. She had us run power content three months before we ran the challenge and the webinar ads that she wanted to do for this particular launch. So the, this is what we do in between when people do a lot of live launches, this is the strategy we run in between. Right. So that way you're known as the mattress guy or the bucket list guy or whatever person out there. Right. So, or the ads exactly. lady. <laughs> exactly. Got it. Sorry. Thank you. No, don't apologize. I feel you like I'm on the me. I feel like I'm on the wrong meeting. Like I walked into no, the wrong you're not. class like, and I'm like, son of a here's the thing. Everything that I teach in this program can be applied. And that's why I always tell people just come to the call. Because like if you don't see it in the training, like I can make it up. Like, like I like I just told you, like I apply this same thing for my restaurant that I have like here in town. I use it for brick and mortar, I use it for e-commerce, right? So all of these strategies can be applied. We just have to change a couple of tactical little things like for e-commerce and for, um, for brick and mortar, you probably don't have to make a three to five minute video, right? Because it, that's why I love like physical products and brick and mortar products. So easy. You don't have to convince someone they need to go eat pizza, right? <laughs> you just need to convince why they, why someone should go to this particular pizza place. 
yeah local local ads are so easy anyone else have a question i do yeah and, I, and then I, i'm coming to you kaya next i see you natoya hi how are you did i say your name correctly yes you did awesome perfect so i run i run a old g4 so i'm just wondering um i guess i have to switch stuff around a little bit for my own decor business you know where i sell like stuff for home you think so what do you so what do you sell what is your most popular item troll pillows um okay. um coffee table accents okay what is it what who, who do you mostly sell to like what's your what's your typical type of buyer my typical buyers are like people with buy new home who loves decorating their home who loves fashion who loves shopping where where does your product fill the gap or what gap are you trying to fill well my products i try to be more affordable okay and um faster shipping all of that's good because here's the thing, like a lot of people have, have gotten adjusted to, I'm just going to shop at home. I don't want to have to go to, you know, the store and stuff like that. So that would be the thing that I'm going to challenge you, Natoya, is like yeah. really figure out like, what are the gaps am I really filling and go deep on that? Like, who am I trying to attract and how am I either saving them time? How am I saving them money with my products? All right. Thank you. Yeah, you're very welcome. Ms. Kaya. Hello. Um, so two questions. First one is, if I'm getting ready to run local ads again, and the page I used to have in my ads manager, I somehow magically am no longer the admin, but the ads are still in my ads manager. Is there a way to create a lookalike audience? Because it won't let me duplicate the ad. Um, and I'm going back and forth with Facebook to prove that I'm the owner of that page. So what you'll be able to do is you'll be able to create audiences of people whose audiences are already inside the ads manager. You will not be able to go and re grab data that lives on the page, such as video views and all of that fun stuff that's, that's on the page if you don't have access because it will not allow you to select. Because whenever you go make video views, you have to select the page for the video views. Yeah. 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 Okay. Um, but did, but did could, you have that audience already created in there? Because it should. Could I then plan B run and add and say, hey, people that have liked this page or followed this page, I want you to show them this ad. It's for local, for, for my massage business. Only if you have access to that, to that audience that you've made of that page. Okay. Okay. So I, at the end of the day, I got to figure out how to get access back to that page. Yeah. Okay. Is, has Facebook, have you gotten on with Facebook support? Yeah, they want a notarized document showing my identification and that I'm like the, the legal owner of the business. So. Uh -huh. Okay. All right. <laughs> uh, <laughs> fun stuff. Second question. Um, last year, I did a, a bunch of different workshops specifically to entrepreneurs starting out in the online space. And the two workshops that this did the best was um, like live streaming, going live on video. Mm -hmm. and our money trauma workshop. Um, my end goal is to attract more coaches and consultants that are open to the spiritual stuff, right? Mm -hmm. um, I'm torn between... Uh-oh. Kaya drove into a place where it's not. there's not a lot of service. Does anyone have a question meanwhile until she gets until she comes back? This Fitz Gerald, how you doing? What's up, Fitz? Long time no see. What's going on, Superstar? What's happening with you? Not much. I, I'm I'm liking the yellow background. Uh yeah, yeah. Clubhouse got me going. Hey, Laura, I got a question. Yeah. Um, I'm going into a new market. Um okay. hidden government contractors, people who are 
who are doing co con federal contracting and I'm having, my brain is hit like a, a brief pause when it comes to this targeting for these government contractors. Okay. Can you help help me see clearly again, please? <laughs> So what is so what are you having issues with? Just coming up with targeting issue, targeting options for government contractors. So let's save that for another one because I really wanted to stay focused on okay. it, on this uh, for tonight um, because I, I I don't have honestly the brain power to even start to open up my brain up to doing anything targeting right now. No problem. And then so then pivot to my next question. Then um, where would the adjustments be in this scenario for? physical products. Yeah, um, absolutely. I'll get, so I'll give, I'll give you a really good example. So not too long ago, um, I ran an ad for, um, well, I ran ads, <laughs> multiple ads for a scarf company. It was very high end silk scarves, but portions of them went to charity, um, went to, uh, a portion of the proceeds went to rescuing women in other country from slavery, like from sexual slavery. So it was, it was a company with a mission. And so I, I did pretty much the same thing. You know, I took kind of Bomba's approach. Um, we ran top of funnel power content. I did, again, why the woman started the brand and her story behind this charity that, you know, she gives from the sales of scarves. The second piece of power content, I actually had a Zoom call with one of the women that was actually rescued from the funds that came from this scarf company. And then the third one was just a fun piece of power content that actually didn't even have any vocal. It was fun music. And I showed, um, I got all of the people who are wearing the scarves on Instagram. And I created something that I call a snackable video that says, these scarves have a mission and it's to liberate you know, women from sexual slavery, blah, 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 blah. And then I like just wrote about the company with words. And so those were my three pieces of power content that I ran. All we did, now I ran that as a video view campaign. All we did was retarget those people and then send them straight to the, the ATM strategy, which was a reminder video. Hey, we saw you were visiting, you visited our website, you know, looked at all these scarves. Here's, and I would do a carousel ad of all the different scarves. And then again, I did a testimonial from a happy customer who like just was so happy about her scarf and like the quality of it. And that's all we ran. Cool. So this strategy, yeah, this strategy applies no matter what type of product you have. All right. Fantastic. And what are you seeing as your average CPAs um, to acquire a customer in, in, in e-commerce for a product that's below $75? Um, acquisition, it varies. Like I always tell people, if you're going to run ads in the e-com space that you're going to expect to pay anywhere between 60 to $85 per acquisition. So make sure that your average value per cart is almost a hundred dollars. Yeah. That's what I was afraid of. It's gone up. It's gone up a lot. Considerably. Yeah. You know, those days of 17 hour acquisition calls mm. are, I haven't seen that in a minute. Yeah. Unless, unless it's like a super niche, like I still see like econ products, like drop ch shipping t-shirts for like, like, you know, like I love my dots and, and, and stuff like that, that are super niche. I still see like purchases come in for as little as like 20, $30 with an average order value of like a hundred dollars. But outside of like the super niche stuff, it's, it's really hard to run ads for an econ product unless it's super niche and super like filling in the gap. Thank you. As always. Yeah, of course. Um, drop drop your question about the targeting in the Ask Laurel. And while I'm having my coffee tomorrow, I'll see if I can find you a solution to that. Appreciate it. Yeah, absolutely. Of course. Always a pleasure, Fitz. I've been with you a long time. <laughs> a lot of you guys have been with me for a long time. Nina's been with me for Rob, you, Nicole, Billy. Lots of lots of familiar faces tonight. William. Hey Laurel, can I go? Absolutely. Uh, yeah. Hey Aspar, how are you? Good, thanks. Great to see you. Um, Great to see you. Awesome session. I got on a bit late, but I, I think I, I caught the best bit, so that's good. Um, yeah. First of all, um, I, you know, I've been running Power Content now for about three or four weeks, and um, 
So I'm really, really liking this uh, strategy. Um, first of all, it made me really kind of like uh, think through a message um, to record that first video, the first, first, the three videos, which I think is a really powerful thing because you know you, you get lost in thoughts about what you're doing, and so being forced to kind of like you know get the message, you know, put a succinct message across is really you know a good good kind of step. Um, so it's been running for like three, four weeks. I've, I'm using the sequential process because okay. um, I tried the uh, the ping pong, but I, I I probably had it right, but I probably didn't have enough volume of people to for it to to start uh, yep. bouncing around. Um, anyway, I reset it up as the in a sequential method. Okay. I've now got um, this is about around about ten dollars a day. That's kind of my budget right now. I'm putting on okay. for that. I've got three hundred and thirty three people that have gone through twenty five percent. Uh, on the first video okay. and I've got 27 people now that have hit 25% on the second video okay um, so I'm quite excited about that that's kind of like <laughs> um, my key question is uh, is actually just about the, the the metrics we could just talk about that because I'm the, my second KPI I'm, I'm hitting the first KPI actually quite well it's like five six cents or something uh, but the second KPI on the first video is way up way over it's like four dollars on okay. 100% but on the second video, it's actually hitting KPI. Um, so I'm wondering if, if I know I could probably improve the videos a little bit, but I, I actually did, you know, I, it kind of worked quite hard to get them done. So I, I don't necessarily want to redo them if I, if I can avoid it. Um, I'm just wondering what your thoughts are in terms of the K, hitting KPI on the first video. Were you here when video. I went over the KPIs in detail or no? I said, say it again, sorry. Were you here when I, because I, I went over the, how to troubleshoot the power content. Were you here for that or? Well, just, uh, you know, I'm aware that, you know, it should hit $1 at hundred percent on the, on the video. Right. But were you here whenever I went to actual, like how to know, like if your if your video is not getting a hundred percent, like the, um, were you here yeah, for the train? I, I might've missed a bit of that. Yeah. Okay. Watch yeah. the replay. Cause I went in, like I went, how I like troubleshoot it with my, with my students. I just don't want to take up any more time than, yeah. um, no but you definitely, yeah, definitely watch the replay because I, I, it essentially like I'll give you like just kind of like a quick rundown. You just have to look, you just have to look at like how far down the video did they get, right? If they made it through the first 15 seconds and you're getting a good cost per through play, then you know it has nothing to do with the video topic, right? So let's say you're, you've gotten them to watch 15 seconds of the video. So they've gotten through your headline, promise of value, call to action. If they're not getting to the 25%, right? between the three play and the 25% is more than likely you probably talked about yourself a little too much. And so you, they didn't make it through the humble brag. Um, once you start getting to like between 25 and 50%, if that that's where the, the number just drops from three plays, then likely they liked the content topic. They just didn't like either you were boring or two, the content didn't fall through, like didn't um, come through on the promise. Yeah, cool. Okay. I think I'll look again at the 25% mark because I'm, I may be losing more people there than I think. Yeah, that's, that's actually really helpful. Yeah, um, I literally just look at and that's how that's how that's how I was saying a while ago, like that's how I even look at all of my YouTube videos, like if I get a YouTube video, and people aren't what like, you can see that people are dropping off at the content. I'm like, fuck, I was not entertaining enough. <laughs> they like the content they watched up until but then I was like, I, I I somehow fell short in my delivery of this content. Got it. Got it. Okay. Yeah. Great. Well, um, I'll keep I'll keep running these and uh, see if I can work on the KPIs. Thank you. Yep. Let me let me know. Let me know where where your video is falling short. Will do. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Always a pleasure, Aspar. Mr. Benson, and then I see Genesis. Hey, Laurel. Good to hey. good to see you in person. I'm brand new to your world. Uh, I know. I was yeah. I was like, oh, we've got a newbie tonight. Yeah, but we've, been, but we've been chatting a while. So, yeah. So um, I've, I've been uh, just trying to, I, I guess, navigate around inside your program. And um, I've watched the, you know, the strategy video, where should you start? And I'm, I don't know why I'm still confused. But um, I think I need to be starting at power content. But maybe you can just clarify that for me. Did you watch the beginning of this training? Yes. What did I say? So you you said if um, if you have an offer, 
then start with lead gen, right? No. What did I say at the very, very beginning of, uh, at this train of this training? I'm, I must have missed I'm, it. I'm only, pick, I'm, all, I'm, all, I'm, only pick, I'm only picking on you. I said I start every single person in my program with this strategy. Okay, so do power content. <laughs> Here, here's the. I'm not going to tell you what to do. Just go back and watch the replay at the beginning, and it'll explain why I start people with this strategy first. Uh, right, which, which I get. I just, and it's something I know I need to do. I just didn't know if I needed to start somewhere else and then move into it. But it sounds like that's the answer to my question. So, so well, well no, I want to make sure you understand why am I making you start with this strategy? Um, I, well, I think because of all the other reasons that you, you mentioned, right? It's, um, it's the least the video views are the least expensive. It uh, creates that instant kind of no like trust factor because it's on camera. Um, what is a big? What is it a big? What is a bigger, pixel. It, what is the biggest reason though, especially for someone who's new to running ads or haven't ran ads in a while? I'm only I'm only picking it, on so you because you is it the, <laughs> so that you just, yeah yeah no this is fine. Is it so that you don't get your ad account shut down? Yeah, it keeps your it keeps your ad account in good standing. So let's say that you're doing a conversion campaign and Facebook doesn't like it. If you had power content running, let's say Facebook disapproves your conversion ad, you are you have three ads that are running without any issues. So it, it just is a better way to protect your ad account. And it gives you a, a way to test your audience and your message to make sure that like before you run the most expensive type of Facebook advertising, that you're on the right track. That's all. Okay. Got it. Yep. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Now, whether or not you take that advice, some people take it, some people don't, and they're just fine. I just, that's what I, that's, all, that's just what I recommend. But no, it's, up, it's up to you at the end of the day. No, yeah. I mean, intuitively, it, it it's kind of where I thought I needed to be. And, you know, you're the expert. So I, I'm, <laughs> I'm not going to, I've never done this. I'm not going to I'm not the, I'm not the, ex, I'm not the expert. I just, um, I just, I tell people, I just have good ideas. Well, you know, a lot, <laughs> you, you know, a lot more about it than I do. So how about that? <laughs> no, that's awesome. So you did good. You passed, you passed the test with flying colors. You get an A plus gold star. <laughs> Thanks, Laura. Welcome Benson. And I promise I won't pick on you every call. No, you're welcome to. Totally <laughs> Thank you. Yep. I'm going to Genesis. I'm saying your name. I'm saying your name right, correct? Yeah, yeah. I think know. every time I ask you to make sure, because I, I keep on second guessing <laughs> you myself. It, you get it correct every time, so don't worry about it. Because <laughs> I answer to so many other things, it's all good. But um, just quickly, just wanted to tell me, uh, Miss Natoya here that I think she has a great start, right? Because she sounded a little hesitant, like I don't know. But I mean, <laughs> I, I heard today that some of the great things to get into as a business owner is to target, if you will, people that are starting something, right? Like parenting or buying homes or things like that, that those people are great to, I was like, oh, like a, just a light bulb went up in my head when I heard that. So I think, you know, she having pillows and coffee things. I think she should definitely go for people that are buying homes, right? Uh, real estate people around there. And then I think she has a great, uh, a great product. I believe so. So I just wanted to tell her that. Um, well, thank, you. Thank, you. thank you. Yes. And then uh, on my end, um, you know, talking about power content, the moment you open your mouth at the beginning, I was like, oh my God, yes, yes, yes. So I'm, I'm taking <laughs> a bunch of notes here. Um, do it have to have some type of lead magnet? Like the thing with me on Facebook is they always shut me down <laughs> because uh, sometimes they don't like where that rabbit hole leads to, right? <laughs> so, <laughs> um, do you want it to have some type of lead, something that I'm giving out or can it just be a nice copy just to get people to engage or do I have to give something out to get people to come to me? Yep. So here, that's a really good question. <clears throat> and so what I always tell people, if they don't, if they're still trying to figure out what their audience wants, here's what I always recommend is use the CTA to do market research. 
So for instance, if I'm doing a video on um, how to book more discovery calls, right? I might say instead of, you know, hey, drop me a line below, I'm gonna give you this. What I might say is if I wanna have conversations with people and I just wanna see where people are, I might say, hey, and the poll of the day is, are you a, a coach who can't close enough sales calls or, or are you a coach that's not getting enough sales calls? Drop me a line below because I want to know what your biggest struggle is today before going into this video and blah, blah, blah. And then I'll go on. But you see how I'm still having a call to action, whereas it might not be to raise their hand for that free thing, but yeah. it is to inspire them to engage because what can I do? Have a conversation with them, right? And if that conversation in the comments, because like if someone says, well, I'm not getting enough sales calls, you could say, hey, um, do you mind if I reach out to you in Messenger? I just dealt with this with one of my other clients and I'll tell you what I did with them, right? But you see how even though I'm not using a free thing, I'm still using that CTA as an option to have a conversation with people and to move it to Messenger so I can learn more about them. Nice. I like that. All right. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Laura. Yeah, you're very welcome. Coming back to Kaya, I see she's sitting down now. And then I'm coming to Scott, and then we're going to end things up with my newest 90 day rock star, Phyllis. Sorry about that. My phone got overheated in the car. <laughs> That's okay. Um, That's okay. Okay. So, where I was at was I'm, I'm torn between do I run, start creating power content around this whole idea of money trauma? Cause that's where a lot of my clients came to, came from last year for that, those workshops. Mm -hmm. um, and then the second group of people that came to the workshops was for, um, you know, getting clarity and confidence to be on video. And you and I have talked about this before, right? Like my thing isn't running an agency. It's not like, um, the ins and outs of running a business. It's more about getting them clear and confident and spiritually aligned that, that they have a life business blueprint. Like that's the end goal. So we had 14 students last year go through our mastermind. Six of them are up and running their businesses. And out of those six, four of them are um, in profit. And of those six, uh, two of them are, they've hit their six figure mark. One of them hit seven figures. So, so I'm what is what is your offer? Like you want to so here's the thing guys, we want to build our content around our offer. So think about this, right? Whenever at the beginning of the training I was like this is what we're doing in order to test our content to see like what is getting people to respond to. So like if you were building a mini webinar about your offer, right? And you're trying to get people into your offer what are some of the questions that people would have about it? Um, so right now, like I said, the biggest thing was them getting clear and confident to be on video. But at the end of the day, what I hear from them is, I thought this was going to be a video training, but what I'm walking away is I'm a different human being in the process. Like I now know how to show up on video. I now know how to be more confident with my clients when I'm speaking to them. Okay. So if your offer is how to be confident on video, then I would build your three pieces of power content around that. Like what are some of the biggest questions? What are the three major questions that people have or problems that they have with being confident on video? That would be, that's where I would start. So be direct with the offer. But I would okay. be super, pol I would be super polarizing. I would, I would actually call out like spiritual entrepreneurs or spiritual coaches or, or something like that. Um, and just be very, very polarizing in your content. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Very welcome. Always a pleasure to chat with you, Kaya. Kaya was my very first VIP client that actually came and actually she's, she actually slept in this room <laughs> that I'm sitting in right now. Cause I didn't have my, I don't, I don't know if I told you this Kaya, but now in my office, we actually built a hotel suite. So now my clients actually have a, a hotel room in my, like we, we split my office in half and now we have a, an entire suite with a full bathroom in my office on main street. So I'll have to come back and see it. I remember you were building it out, but yeah, I didn't get to see it. 
Oh, I'm super excited. VIP days, guys. If you come and spend a day with me here, you can do one in Biloxi or you can do it here. I have so much fun on my VIP days. We shoot content. We do all of these exercises together. It's like amazing. Like the, like the last VIP day I had, we, we flew the client in, got all of her 15 pieces of content done, and I shot them all while she was here. <laughs> so lots of stuff. Another client came in. We wrote, shot all of their ads, launched them all. I had one client come in. We built the entire funnel, shot all the ads and launched. I mean, we, it's, we get a lot of shit done. So you're, if you're ever interested in that, just like reach out. We, we have a lot of fun with that. Mr. Scott. Yeah. Am I here? Did I step on? No, you're here. <laughs> oh, I thought someone else was on. Nope, you're so, you're I, on, and then this, and then we're ending things with with my rock star, Miss Phyllis, over here. That sounds uh, what you just said sounds awesome. You know, <laughs> I always learn something, no matter what, and I've learned a lot today. Thank you so much. I appreciate. Oh. it. You're very welcome. Remember at the beginning of the training, I was talking about Scott. Scott's offer, like, you know, teaches people how to pass their CDL training on the first try, right? Right. Super easy, right? Super easy, clear offer. I love it. I love super clear. I love super clear and easy offers. <laughs> Give me 10 minutes. Yep. <laughs> Give me 10 minutes. So anyway, it's always a pleasure. But, you know, like I said, I always learn something here. And I have looked at what you just had on this presentation was the video because I'm running engagement ads and I'm not looking at the video. Where is that at? Because I can't, I can't go to Facebook right now and take a look at it. Where am I going to find that at? Yeah. You're talking about the video in engagement? My, yeah. And my ads manager, I mean the video yeah. engagement where I can see if they've watched 25%, 50%, 75%. Yep. Very that's where I'm me... losing them. Yep. Absolutely. Let me bring mine up. I know how to find the CTA and all of that, but before I lose you today, I don't want to search through Facebook for three hours because nope, really I'm not running anything right now. It's all good. Okay. So if we open up, remember how guys, I told you I had some power content that didn't do so good down here. Um, so if you go here, Scott, columns, yes, ma'am, right. Video engagement. Oh, right there. Yep. It'll actually, it'll actually show you everything. I've been running ads for all these years and didn't even know that little stupid stuff. But that would really oh, open up my world. <laughs> and I really appreciate it very much. One more question for you. Yep. Um, and I know this is new, or I, I think it's new, is the hour with you? Yep. How do I go about uh, applying for that? Yep, absolutely. So if we go into, yep, this is something we actually just added, how to get Laurel's help and right. get personalized help from Laurel, um, you can click here, book a power hour with me. Okay, awesome. Yeah. I have a lot of work to do before I get to that, but anyhow. Oh my gosh, no worries. I, you, probably don't have that you probably don't have that much to do. <laughs> well, yeah, I do. <laughs> but anyway, I, I really appreciate you. You really have opened up a lot of doors for me. And I want to say hi to Phyllis because my name is Scott Thompson. Hi, Phyllis. Hi. That's my married name. <laughs> Your married name. Well, there you go. See, you got my a good husband, name. Yeah. <laughs> He's an Irishman. <laughs> uh, I got a little bit of Scottish in me. A little bit of Irish, too. My mommy always told me I was a Scotty dog. That's why she named me Scotty, because I'm a mixed breed. <laughs> oh, oh, my God. <laughs> That's so funny. Hey Fitz, I see you. He's he's asking if there's fishing involved in the VIP day. There's there's fit there could be fishing involved and crawfish involved. <laughs> the restaurant actually that I work here, that I work that I was telling you guys I, I, I work for here in town, they do all my catering and stuff like that. So they're like, yeah, we'll throw down whenever clients come for a big crawfish boil. We have fun. We have fun here. That's so awesome. Thank oh, yeah, you. Absolutely. My pleasure. Saving the rock star for last, Miss Phyllis. How are you? I am not a rock star. Um, a rock how do I get an invite to that VIP day? That's what the first thing I want to know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you just gotta re you just gotta reach out. We'll, we'll, uh, I want to know that too. Cool. <laughs> and then, um, 
you know, Laurel, I always have so many questions, but I need to narrow it down and make it relevant to this. So my power content, I am in Laurel's 90 day program and it's amazing, Benson. I think you should start there. That's just my opinion. Um, <laughs> I'm doing a ton of power content. I like to be in front of the camera though. Um, I notice people aren't like, I mean, I've only been at it a couple of weeks. I get some views, some mm -hmm. comments. I just, I know you just say keep going, but I notice I'll get nervous and you can tell I'm reading instead of just because I have, always have so much to say. Um. <laughs> so, so as we like went through this process tonight, where do you, where do you feel is like the, the bottleneck in the process? Like, is it that you're not getting their attention? You're not keeping their attention or they're watching, but they're not engaging. What would you say? I is think the they're watching problem? and not engaging. They're watching but not engaging. Okay. Yeah. I am getting, starting to get like sporadic messages like, oh my, cause I've been, I'm in the hormone space now yeah. uh, or mostly that's what I'm talking about. Um, because I think that's where I can fill the gap. I think for women of color, there's not enough of us talking about that. So I would agree. occasionally I'll like yesterday, I got a message. She was like, oh my God, you, you mentioned something about hormones. I've been watching your videos. Do you think it would be a good fit for your three day reset? But that doesn't happen all the time. Right. That's like one in 12 days. What are you giving? What are you giving away? What is your what is your value bomb right now? I'm just giving content right now. I have I haven't gotten okay. to the value. Well, that's, well, why not, that's why they're not engaging is because they're, you're not getting them to raise their hand for something. Is there okay. something because you because you have been getting a lot of buzz about the hormone thing? Is there something that's in your program that would be of something high value? That kind of hurts a little bit to give it away for free, but would open the door that you can say during your video, hey, you know, if you're having issues with your hormones, I've got this free resource. Up until now, I've only shared with my private clients, and I'll be happy to share it with you because you watch this video. Just drop me a line below. I'm not going to ask you for an email. I'm going to deliver it straight to your messenger. What would that, what would that thing be? It's the three-day reset, which I actually opened as a challenge and only five people have actually signed up so but what would be uh, but what would be a free resource like a like a more like a lead domino versus like something that's going to be high commitment like maybe like can you put together like some type of p or maybe you have some type of pdf or some or some kind of calculator or something that would like a sample meal plan like what right. a second day looks like or i could I could give them the, the three day as a PDF for them to just take, you know, because yeah. it has information about symptoms, what they need to speak to their doctors about and things they should be eating and journal pages like I can give yes. them that as a PDF. Absolutely. And here's what you do. OK, because there's a there's a process right when we get people in messenger. This is an excellent topic for us to end on tonight. So here's that process, right? You, you they raise their hand in the comments. You move them to messenger. That's a perfect opportunity for you to not just give them the PDF and let them go, right? Ask them a question. You know, what, like, what, it, what do you feel is the biggest issue that you're having? Thanks for watching my video. What do you feel is like the biggest issue about this? I do have this free resource that I think would be high value. Like, and, and start that conversation. Don't give them that PDF right away. Get them to talk to you because that PDF might not actually be the best resource that you have for them. You might have a better resource or a better training that they can do. And then it opens the door for you to personally invite them to that three to five day thing. Okay. Okay. We need like, whenever we're doing power content, I know it's going to feel a little weird at first, but what we want to do is we want to, it, it's so funny because people are like, well, you do power content so that you can give them the lead magnet so that you can retarget them later. But honestly, my entire strategy is based on, I just want to talk to as many people in messenger as possible. Someone asked a while ago, um, Chris asked, um, will this work for like a SaaS product or whatever? I sold like my, my $7 program doing power content, giving away free cheat sheet resources. And then I had the $7 link in that resource. Like if, Hey, like, did you like, you know, want to see the, the step-by-step -step ad setup of this, like in the resource? I would say, want me to help you on a live coaching call, join my $7 program. That's literally how I sold. Like, it doesn't matter, like whether you have like a low ticket product or what, like, or not, if we can have that conversation in messenger and give them a solution to get our help, it doesn't matter whether it's a high ticket, 
phone call, whether it's low ticket or whatever, we can sell them whatever we feel fit in Messenger. So that's the whole point of the whole thing. The whole process is just so I can have a conversation in Messenger. Why? Because conversations, that's this path to cash. Right. Um, do you think I should run, can I put money behind that? Can I run that as power content with money on it? I, th I think absolutely. As long as it's not breaking any Facebook guidelines, but yeah, absolutely. Yeah. The hormones, that's the tough one. I got to make sure the wording so, is right. So stuff for hormones, remember talking either first person or third person in your content. Yeah. Not speaking like I'm talking to them, like it's their problem and they, exactly. okay. Exactly. <laughs> Exactly. Third person or first person. Got it. And video views or engage. Mine still says video views. Okay, cool. Yep. Mine okay. still says video views too. One of my clients, because in Lean on Laurel, I got to do a little pitch, right? Lean on Laurel. It's full right now. But if you want to get in on the April cohort, um, I actually offer, I do all the ad setups for you in the program. So it's pretty, it's pretty freaking cool. Um, but anyway, I just wanted to throw that in because I, I forgot to like pitch, right? Lean on Laurel. I've been talking about Lean on Laurel, didn't pitch it. So if you if you want if you want in on that, I'm gonna have the link to apply in the document. Um, but that actually comes with uh, me doing your ad setups for you. So I take the I take I take the hassle of the ads management away from that. But yeah. But anyway, I had a new I had a new Lean on Laurel client come in, and I was doing her ad setups, and I was like. Oh. She doesn't have the video. View. That's how I fit. That's how I figured it out. And I was like, and then I went and I typed in and then Facebook just announced that they're getting rid of the, the video view thing. So that's how I found out was doing one of my clients ads. <laughs> Facebook with all the changes too much going on. Thank you so yeah. much. Oh my gosh. Absolutely. Yeah. But the, but the, the good news is Facebook says that they're making all of these changes to make the platform a lot easier for so many people to use. So they're making it user-friendly. So they're not going to have as many objectives, you know, to use and stuff. So I believe them. They want people to spend money. They want people to stay on the platform. They do all these changes for, you know, I like it because it, it weeds out all of the fake gurus and all the fake marketers who have been, you know, shortcutting it for so long. So I always get excited when Facebook makes a change because a whole bunch of gurus get disgruntled and, and stomp off angry. <laughs> awesome and you guys have a great evening i am my my voice is just about shot I've been talking for two and a half hours but hopefully you know you guys got a lot of value out of it this is probably the most valuable thing that i could teach you guys honestly like the most valuable thing because if like here's the here's the thing think about this right if we can't get this content right what makes us think we're going to get an entire funnel correct you know, like if we can't have a simple conversation and make that simple offer, if we can't do that, there's no way we would make a, a funnel work. So awesome. Awesome. Well, you guys have an amazing night. It, it's time for some beer, right? Happy St. Patrick's Day, y'all. Have a I'm good day. I'm having one right now. Thank you, dear. <laughs> Great Thanks, to see you, Scott. See you soon. Bye. Bye. Thanks. Thank, Thank you. you.